Learn how to forgive folks. And listen, something dangerous that we do. The Bible says, Matthew 6, round about the 13th verse, he says, if you don't forgive men, but they trespass. And the Father in heaven won't forgive you of who? Of yours. Now, I don't know about you. I got enough on me than the Lord just not to forgive me because I'm too stubborn, too hateful, too angry to forgive somebody else. And you're wondering why stuff ain't working right in your life. You're wondering why the protection of God has left your presence. You're wondering why you can't feel what you need to feel when you come to the house of God. It's all because you forgot to forgive somebody. All because you got hell up in you. Something you don't know who Christ is. Getting Christians talking about they hate folks. They, they do it, they do it, they do it, they do it, they do it. Come on, they can't say, look, I might not like your ways, but I love you. You may get on my last nerve, but I love you. I ain't gonna say I hate you, and I'm not gonna have the spirit on the inside of me of hate because no matter what you do to me, I'm gonna come back and hug you, talk to you, speak to you, treat you right, treat you like a child of God, my relationship with the Lord because you want to do it You really don't have that much power because when you do that, you allow people to have power over you. You let folks make you, let you get mad to me. They don't make me mad. They ain't make you mad. You made yourself mad. <laughs> they made you mad. <laughs> because when you have a peace of God, nobody can make you mad. He, he, he has taken control. He says, you must have learned Christ. You must have learned him. You must have learned him. He says, I've given you the gifts, so the gifts what I, what I gave you have taught you to love everybody. The gifts that I've given you have stood up here and preached to treat everybody right. The gifts that I've given you have told you to learn how to follow instructions and follow a leadership. The gifts that I've because they only saw a couple and they begin to flank around them. And while they were in the fight, they begin to see other armies coming from both sides. And so the captain of the army begins to tell them, retreat. Retreat. And it begins to mean to, to fall back to, to, to especially when being attacked, to withdraw yourself. When being attacked, it, it seems as though that we oftentimes look and think the enemy is not that strong. We look and see the enemy in small numbers and believe because we have many that we can take the enemy. But maybe you hadn't read the Bible that I've read, but God don't need many folks to take over some stuff. He only needs a few. You, you, you do remember Gillian, don't you? Gillian came with a big army, but God started chopping the army down so he just had a couple of hundred. But let me tell you, you have to remember that it's not in the folks. It's in the Savior. <laughs> we have to, have to learn how 
to retreat when things go on. He says, listen what he says. He says in 22, he says that we learn to put off concerning the former conversation, the old man which is corrupt according to the deceitful right. lust. Yeah. It, it keeps coming up, this motif keeps coming up to renew, to change, to, to turn away to, from old man to new man. Right. He, he says that you, you, you keep running in the battle with the old man. <laughs> you, you need to learn how to retreat and put on what God has already given you. Right. Listen, he's talking to believers who have stayed out around the wrong folks too long. I, I know, we can, can you relate to this? Can, can, can you relate? Come on, hanging around the wrong folks too long. You begin to take in some of the ways. And, and he says you have to learn how to retreat. You have to learn how to, uh, to, to withdraw yourself because the enemy is constantly trying to flank you. He, he, he tried to flank you. Yeah, he tried to flank you. He, he, he tried to get you. Let me tell you how he tried to get you. Sometimes he gets you in your bedroom. Some of those marital devils. I know you didn't know it, but you had some hints. You, you, had, you had some hints around now. Because you know they ain't love the Lord. You ain't got to say nothing. <laughs> Sometimes we, it's people we hang out with. Sometimes it's stuff that we do. We, we think it's all right when we go in it. But it begins to flank around us. And begin to overtake us. And begin to tear us down. And he says, listen, you have to learn how to withdraw yourself. Matter of fact, how you going to withdraw yourself, you're going to take off the old man and put on the new man. Listen, I've already given you what you needed to work in this thing. I've, I've given you the life. I've given you the, the trust. I've given you the power. I've given everything. You have everything that you need, but you keep taking it off. He says, don't no longer walk the same way. If you want to keep your swagger, your Christian swagger, and have let the church have a good swagger, then you need to learn how to put 